so th this is going to be a, a short lecture um, and it's a very simple um, idea and this is uh, about the stereo so as we were talking about yesterday that uh, one of the um, basic um, step in understanding images and video is to um, recover the shape from images of video and these are the different methods uh, which essentially recover the 3D shape and also um, in terms of motion it you know compute the 3D motion the rotation translation of the objects or the camera or both so this works either you are given one image or you are given multiple images so there are many methods uh, stereo is one we are going to talk about today and motion we talked about yesterday talk about the structure for motion methods and shading uh, which will require one image and photometric stereo texture contours and so on there these are different ways to exploit this 3d information to recover that so um, the shape from stereo is very intuitive and um, most of you know um, that you have two eyes you get two images the image in the left is bit shifted compared to right image and that shift or disparity gives you an idea about the depth depth means a distance from the camera the objects which are closer to you will have smaller depth as compared to objects which are further away from you and also when you go to watch movies with those um, um, glasses um, the polaroid glasses when you watch this IX, IMAX movies which are in 3D so that essentially is using stereo that you get two images and you will actually if you don't use glasses you will see the image like that okay it will be kind of superb most two images disparity and when you wear the glasses then you are filtering the one of the image uh, on this eye and filtering another image from that eye so you get two images and shift it and you have capability to fuse it and you see in the 3D so that's the whole idea so in this case you know we have these billiards and um, these you want to you when you get two pictures left and right image they look like that and um, given these two images you want to write a computer program which will recover the depth the distance from camera to each of the pixel it's called depth map or it is called disparity map and that's what the stereo is about okay so um, so given these two images these are from the books from Zaleski then you will get a depth match like that so it be image every pixel you will have the number which will tell you the distance or disparity of that pixel um, distance means how far it is from the camera if you look at um, these are closer to you as compared to this so this is darker than this one and uh, that is the 3d information which you get okay so now first thing is we have to show the geometry that is it possible to recover the depth uh, from two images and the geometry is very simple then we'll talk about you know how we will write a program to actually do that given two images so we have a point in 3d which we call w and it has coordinate x y z okay and we have two cameras camera one and camera two and um, then the separation between these two camera is B which is called baseline and like you have basically two eyes there are two cameras and there's a distance between them and uh, so the image in the left camera is formed here because the ray will hit at this pixel go through the lens and the image will form here and the main right will form here okay and uh, this is the focal length of both camera the distance from the image plane to the center of the cameras so now this is the image coordinate x1 and left this is an x2 
and the difference between them is called disparity. Okay, and these are the definition. B is a baseline, F is a focal length, C1 and C2 are the camera centers, and X1 and X2 are image location left and right cameras. So given this um, uh, setup, then we want to find out how we can determine Z, which is the depth which we want to find. Knowing the where the image is from left and where the image is from right, knowing the focal length and knowing the baseline, we want to find out the depth. Okay? And it's very simple what we are going to do. We are going to look at these two triangles. One is a big triangle, which is W, X1, X2. And there's a small triangle, which is this one, W, C1, C2. And these two triangles are equivalent. So we are going to look at the corresponding size. Suppose this side, uh, this altitude in this, which is Z plus F, which is a depth plus F. And then corresponding side, altitude in this smaller triangle which is Z. So Z plus F upon Z should be equal to if you take the base of this big triangle which is X1 F plus X2 um, uh, X1 plus X2 and plus base which is B. So we have X1 X2 plus B which is this thing should be divided by the for the smaller triangle base of that which is B. So these two have to be equal because they are equivalent triangle. Okay, so that um, makes it easy because now we know x1, x2 uh, from the image. I'll tell you how to find it. The B is fixed because for these cameras they are fixed that how much they are separated, and uh, then Z we can find out and F is also known. So from here you can manipulate this. And you can show that Z is equal to F, focal length, baseline B, and X1 plus X2, which is the disparity. And um, that we will call D our disparity. So as you see, the depth is inversely proportional to disparity, the displacement, the distance between the image in left and right. And that's what you, know, you, saw, you saw earlier that these... Um, uh, this image, which you will see when when you go to IMAX movie, without the glasses, you will see something like that. One image, another image, still separated. And depending on the disparity, you will see the depth, how far that is. So that is very simple, you know, geometry, and uh, it is used to do this using a computer program. Okay. So here are some examples. Um, we have a two pair. This is normally called stereo pair two images, left and right, and this is the depth recovered. It's another pair, this is a depth recovered, and then once you have the depth, you can synthesize this image from different viewpoint, and that's why it's very useful in, in the computer graphics and so on. So one thing is <coughs> that we are going to assume that these images are rectified, which means these images are like that so that we can match at this point, go to the exactly same line in the next image we find this match. So therefore this matching will be in 1D. You know, there won't be any displacement in the Y axis, only displacement X axis. And typically when they are not uh, rectify, aligned, so we will rectify them and we will align them. And that's what we talk about, the one application of fundamental matrix is to rectify these images. Okay, so we now onwards we'll assume they are rectified. We'll just find the match in the same row. So here is the example. So we have a left um, image and the right image. Um, so let's say we want to find our disparity of this pixel. So what we'll do? We'll take a window around here. We go exactly same line in the right image. We'll find out where is the best match of this, where it does look very exactly same, then the same point and you find how much the displacement. So we look at here, we look at here, we look at here and maybe we'll find the best match here. So this plot shows you the disparity or displacement from this which is exactly here, whether this way, this way or this way and then given the disparity what is the difference or error between this window 
in this window. If there's a match, then the error has to be very small, zero. Uh, if there's no match, then the error will be big. So therefore, we look at different possible disparities, which is these different locations, and whichever give us the smallest error, then we say that's a match and that's a disparity. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to explain to you. So it'll be basically a difference between the window, these pixels, and the pixels which you are matching here, pixel by pixel difference between this and this. And you square it and sum it, and that's the error. Okay? It's called sum of square differences. So, so then once we know the disparity, then we can find the depth. And, and that's the idea. It's pretty simple, very intuitive to do that. Okay? So now that's a, you know, the next thing what he asked. So now how do we find the match? How do you find that this window, the left, matches with the right? Which location matches the best? So then there are these methods called correlation-based methods. And um, <clears throat> essentially we can compute the disparity for each pixel, finding the correlation. And there are many different measures. One is called the sum of square differences, and we have talked about it a little bit before. So we'll take the right patch uh, window, corresponding left patch, and we will subtract pixel by pixel, square it, and sum that. That will give you the error. Okay? It's called sum of square differences. Or instead of squaring the difference, we can take absolute value and sum that up. That is called sum of sum of absolute difference. Uh, instead of you know finding the difference in squaring, we can multiply. So if they are similar, the product will be large. If they are not similar, then be small. Uh, this is called cross correlation. Okay. Then we have normalized correlation, which is uh, similar to um, <clears throat> this one. But here, what we are doing is normalizing uh, from the um, here we do the correlation between left and right, but then we normalize uh, with the total sum and square it so that uh, we can always get, when they are exactly the same, we always can get one. So then we have another way where we will take the mean, which is here, the mean of left window, mean of right window, and the standard deviation of left and the right these are the mean and standard deviation, and we subtract those means from each of the corresponding mean from left and right. Then we do the correlation and divide by the standard deviation. So these are different measures, and they have different advantages, disadvantages. But just I wanted to let you know that you you have a choice what other things you can use. Okay. So in general, the correlation uh, is a very important concept as we have been talking about in the edge detection, applying these masks and computing derivatives and all those things. So correlation, convolution, all these are related. So, um, so it can find the similarity and dissimilarity uh, between uh, windows or pages and, and this is, you know, these are different ways to do it as I just explained to you. And um, so now this correlation not necessarily not only used for the stereo but it can actually be used for other things and um, the uh, the this correlation is not only uh, can be used using intensity value or color but you can use the Laplace Gaussian output and do the correlation on that or instead of the intensity you can apply for the gradient magnitude, get the gradient magnitude edge pixel and match those. So there are different variations of that and they have advantages, disadvantages. But the notion, the basic notion of correlation is very simple. You take a window here, I'm here, go to the next image, take a corresponding window and f multiply pixel by pixel, add it up, that's a correlation, or subtract pixel by pixel, square the difference, and then edit up and so on that give you how similar or how dissimilar two windows are. Okay? So um, there's another thing called mutual information. So a similar idea where you look at the window and find the distribution and joint distribution of you know both windows 
and then find the marginal distribution of the left window, right window, and use that to say how similar, uh, how much mutual information between these two windows. So, so this is pretty interesting work, and it's a basic. It really works, and it has been known for the last, you know, more than 50 years, and uh, you know, it's used in many places. So now. As we said in stereo, we have to search only in the same line, same scale line. But we can use the same idea to basically find the optical flow. As you know, the optical flow also finds the displacement. And in there, our displacement can be in X and Y. That's why we have UV. So this block matching, you can use essentially for computing optical flow. And this is also used for the MPEG uh, when when they do compression. That's where the motion vectors are used also. So MPEG motion vectors, optical flow, stereo. Of course, when you do, we have only displacement on X. So it's a simplification, special case of the block matching. So um, the the idea is that we have a, a block or a window in MPEG, each block is 8 by 8. And then we take this block in the right image, for example, and then go to the left image, and then we look at possible matches everywhere in the 16 by 16 window, find where is the best match, okay? So we look at lots of places. This is general block matching, not necessarily stereo. When stereo, we'll just look at in this row. So I'm talking about that. So now, you know, we'll have these eight pixels, you know, so we, if the origin is here, so we will have, you know, mm, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, up to minus seven, x, and similarly, minus one, minus two, minus seven, y, and then we will have possible displacement in x from minus four to four and plus four to four in uh, <coughs> y direction. So you can write down these mathematically. So, so, the, so the process is that you take each 8 by 8 block, center on this particular pixel x, y, and go to the right image, and then take a 16 by 16 block and find the match there, and uh, compute the sum of square differences, and look at all possible blocks, and then um, pick the one which has the least SSD, and that displacement, wherever it matches, that gives you basically the optical flow. You know, the displacement from the x, y to x prime, and that's optical flow. And in the stereo, it will be just displacement x. So, so this, you know, again, showing you that in order to do that, say some of square differences, you will take the um, k frame and k minus one frame if it's a motion, when you come optical flow, uh, this will become left image and right image. And uh, you want to find the pixel by pixel difference. So this is eight by eight windows. So these indices are from zero to minus seven. And um, so these are for i, j. And then in this image, you are going to displace it by u and v. So you will take uh, one particular value of displacement u, v, find the value, to take another value of displacement uv, find the value, look at all these values, and pick the one which is give you the minimum sum of square differences. So this is the definition of org min, which means saying uv will vary, u will vary from minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, v will vary minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, and so on. And so you have lots of these possibilities. For each possibility, you compute this thing, and then pick the one which is a minimum, and correspond to that, find that displacement, that's the answer. So it's a very simple way to describe, essentially, this whole slide in a formula. And that's the idea of a mathematics, that you can compact description uh, as once you understand what every symbol means. Okay, so then we have you know different versions of this absolute difference um, and uh, maximum matching pixel count. So here, what we do, we look at um, pixel by pixel difference. So well, let's look at the pixel in kth frame, which is like a left image and the right image, and find the absolute difference. If the absolute difference is small, then we say one, otherwise zero. 
So uh, we then count how many of them are ones and that gives you that how many are similar. If this is less than some threshold, which means they are similar, so there's a match. So then we have another summation here where we match how many are pixels are similar and that gives you the match. Here we are looking at a similarity. In the SST we are looking at the dissimilarity. So there we are minimizing, here we are maximizing. But they are exactly the same. You can put a minus sign here, you can do the minimizing. So it's the same thing. Okay? So, so the same kind of thing, cross correlation is like that. And instead of subtracting, we are going to multiply. And as I have shown you before, that from the subtraction, you can actually drive the correlation because A minus B whole squares A square plus B square minus 2AB. So if I look at that, A square and B square does not contribute any correlation. The only contribution is AB. And a minus b whole square is equal minus you know two ab. So you minimize the difference, or minimize minus two ab, or maximize ab. So that's the correlation, and this is the sum of square differences. It's a pretty simple, simple idea. So um, so then it's normalized correlation and um, all these kind of things. You can look at that. So now we want to talk about um, one. Uh, stereo algorithm which is different from correlation and this is what you are going to implement if you want to do this uh, bonus program and this is very interesting and uh, it um, uses uh, this algorithm called uh, simulated annealing which um, can be actually used to solve any nonlinear program nonlinear function you know find a maximum a minimum nonlinear function okay so this was proposed by a researcher called Bernard. And um, so we want to, in the, in the stereo, we want to look at the similar intensity, okay? Now it's, you know, similar to brightness constraint. You know, that's what we are looking at, the optical flow. And also we want to come up with that disparity map we get. Because disparity map, as I showed you, is like an image. So that image should also be smooth like the objects are smooth, like we say optical flow should be smooth, so disparity map should be smooth, okay? So, um, so the function he will minimize is this. One is that the, take a right image and left image and find the absolute difference between these two in a small neighborhood, here's the three by three, that should be smart. That's the same thing as we were talking about. That if you want to say this point images with this, then they should be very similar. And that this is the disparity, that how much you are move in X direction in the other image. Then in addition to that, we put the smoothness constraint that the gradient of the derivative of the disparity map which we are going to get, because this is ultimately we will get. Given two images, we are going to get a dxy every pixel we will have disparity. And so we want to put a constraint that, that, that derivative of this disparity map, which is again a difference between these two disparity map you know, consecutive pixels, uh, should be small and the difference should be small. That's it. That's a function we want to minimize for total all, all of these pixels. So now, um, now you can, you know, look at the exhaustive set. You say, well, if I take this pixel, then is, as we were doing in correlation, is it, you know, is it uh, small? Or if I look at this one, is it small? Is it small? You know, you can do the search, and that's what we are doing. Um, so, um, <clears throat> but now when you want to do the global search, because you have lots of pixel in the image, and let's say every pixel can have maximum 10 disparity values, you know? So disparity value, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and minus 1, minus 2, and so on. So these are disparity. Plus is it moves right, negative means it moves left. It can be both way. So then for, if you have an image of the 128 by 128 image, then each disparity, each pixel can have 10 possible values, which means you have to look at the 10 to the power 16,000 
different combination of disparity map. You know, it's a huge, huge um, you know, search space because you want to impose this, this, this constraint, which is smoother as constraint, which is on the whole, all the pixels. Okay? So that's why this is not possible to do that. So um, that's why this guy came up with that, well, let's use a new idea of using this simulated annealing that we can get this minimum quickly. And this is very important. This, this simulated annealing is used in lots of many applications. And so basic algorithm very simple, very interior, and that's what you are going to implement it. Okay? So what is simulated annealing? So it, it, is, it is similar to the physical phenomena. You know, when you have metal, what you do, you, you increase the temperature so all these molecules start moving electrons and so on. Then slowly you layer the temperature and then you get a very nice annealing. And it's a physics, you know, that, that, that's what they do in physics uh, to understand the different material characteristics. So he, this is used the same thing in actually uh, minimizing a function. So what we want to do, as you saw, that we will come up with the disparity value for a pixel, and that we will call a state of the system, okay? So, so now we don't know what's the right solution. So that's why we'll say, let's start a random guess. Say, well, this is the disparity. So we'll say, select a random state, which means we'll select the disparity, and then we'll select the temperatures. Annealing, because that's why there's a temperature notion. So then, so we have first state S, you know, any random number you generate, and then we select the another random number, again, S prime. They have to be different because they're random. Then we will say, well, if you take the state S, what is the energy, which is the energy, you know, as I show you here, um, which was um, here, okay, this is energy because it just depends on disparity. And um, so, so we'll have energy for the S, dxy, you know, where we have S, and energy for S prime, we find a difference, okay? So then we say that if the difference um, <coughs> is less than zero, then we'll take the new state, S prime, okay? If the difference is not, then we will generate this probability, which is called P, and uh, there will be exponential e to the power minus delta e, which is the difference divided by temperature. Okay? So, um, so in the beginning, it will be high temperature, so there will be lots of random moves. But then slowly, we will reduce the temperature. So we'll get a probability, and then we'll generate another random number between 0 and 1, because the probability is between 0 and 1. So from here, we'll get number from 0 to 1, and from here, we'll get number from 0 to 1, and randomly, we'll choose the wrong state, because this function may have a local minima, so we may not always get the right one as we follow this. Here, we will take the wrong step, that even though energy is you know, going up, we'll take that randomly. That's why we are generating random number here. So if x is less than p, we'll take the new state, okay? And if no, then we will decrease, um, um, if there's no decrease in several iteration in the energy, we'll, we'll lower the temperature and we'll keep repeating that. So that's the general idea of the simulator anything. It's very simple. And you can use this for any function you want to minimize. As you know, that when you have nonlinear function, it's very hard to minimize that. There are lots of difficult problems there. So, so but if you have, and especially the functions for which you don't have analytical expression. As we have been talking about, so if you have a function you want to minimize, you can just differentiate it equal to zero. But this is only for functions which are continuous and for which you have analytical expression. But there are functions which are not, we don't have analytical expression. So you have data and we want to minimize that. So that's why you, you will use these kind of uh, methods. So that's it, you know, that's, that's basically is the method, and the results are, so left image, right image, and you will get depth map like that. 
and um, another left, right, and it's a depth, it's a ball, a sphere. So um, now, in general, stereo is very active area of research. You know, there's a lots of lots of papers. There's a data sets which are available, um, and this is from the University in Japan. Uh, this is one of the image, and this is the ground truth they can find the disparity that we have for maybe range, laser range finder it will give you, or maybe even connect will give you the depth map. So that is uh, ground truth. Then this will be something like we will get from the correlation based matching, you know, and uh, this you can compare with the ground truth, you know, still it has some problems because these are, you know, some errors here. And this is the, one of the best method few years ago, which give you very good results, and which is very similar to the ground truth. Okay, so the benchmark, there is, you know, standard results and so on, people have been looking at that. Um, so stereo, once you have, uh, once you recover the depth or disparity, you can do lots of things. There are lots of applications. So here's the image. This is from Zaleski book, which you have access to. Um, so this is um, the image, and uh, this is computed disparity map, and you can visualize it from different viewpoint. Um, this is another example where you have two images, and you can synthesize the image in between them. This is a synthetic, but it looks real. That in this guy was looking at there, then this one, then this one. Then you can generate a 3D model of a face and synthesize a new image which is artificial or you can do virtual reality, you can superimpose the real with the virtual and um, you can you know, do lots of things like uh, come with a 3D model of the human like that. So many many more applications but this uh, gave you uh, a basic um, idea of what is a stereo, the geometry which is very intuitive left and right camera are the best line and focal length and depth and also very simple algorithms one is correlation based which is matching and other is the simulator link which is you know should work better than the correlation and um, which is doing the search in the very complicated function and the idea there is that in order to find the minima of a function, one way will be you start with somewhere and you take the step and say if it is going down, keep going that step and you will get the minima. That's a, called a gradient descent. Okay, so I have a, a very nice description of this in, in my book. These are different sections. You should look at that, including the similar annealing and these pictures. And of course, there is a whole discussion on the uh, Zaleski's book, chapter 11.